Welcome to my voice recording of the Louisiana Manual for the Environmental Horticulture Industry. I might mess up a bunch of words in this manual, but I hope this helps you to pass your horticulture exam. This manual is the basic source of information for those persons preparing for the LNLA Certified Nursery and Landscape Professional Examination. It is also approved by the Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry as the basic source of information for those persons preparing to take examinations for the horticulture service and landscape contractor licenses issued by the Department's Horticulture Commission. Chapter 1, Plant Nomenclature and Classification. Nomenclature is just how plants are named, how anything is named. Plant names. A nursery salesperson must be able to identify plants by common and scientific, Latin, or botanical names. Consider the confusion when the common name cedar is applied to plants that include arborvitae, cedar, cypress, false cypress, and junipers. The American Joint Committee on Horticultural Nomenclature has adopted standardized plant names, a dictionary of plant names. In this book, every plant is listed with the scientific name and one or more common names. The scientific name is made up of the plant's genus and species. No plant has more than one scientific name, although it may have many common names. For example, Pinus contorta is a botanical name, genus and species, of the shore pine found on the Pacific coast. It is known by that name worldwide. It has other common names, such as contorted pine, coast pine, and lodgepole pine. Genus names are always capitalized and species names generally or not capitalized. Giving plants a genus and species name or specific epithet is credited to the Swedish botanist Linnaeus, 1707 to 1778. So that's when he died, 1778. He was appalled at the confusion of common names in his day and sought to give every plant a name that could be used any place in the world. This system of naming plants is called the binomial system of nomenclature. It is Latin, a language that does not change. Species. A genus indicates a group of closely related plants, such as the oaks, quervicus, hollies, lex, or the maples, acer. Plants within a genus are divided into subgroups called species. A naturally occurring subgroup within a species may be different enough in appearance from the remaining members of the species to be called a botanical variety. An example of this would be Taxus baccata var, fastigita, known as Irish yew, which is a botanical variety of the English yew, Taxus baccata. Cultivars. The International Code of Nomenclature for Cultivated Plants recognizes a special category, the cultivar or cultivated variety. The cultivar designates a special group of individuals significant for the purposes of agriculture, forestry, or horticulture that retain their distinguishing features when propagated. The cultivar name is written in the common language and is set off by single quotation marks. For example, Lagistromia indica, X fori natchez, natchez crepe myrtle, for magnolia grandiflora little gem. So that's two examples. Sales communication. It is especially important for the retail nursery salesperson to know the correct botanical and accepted common names of the plants he's selling so that he can communicate with suppliers and consumers. Some states have set requirements that all non-herbaceous ornamental plants be properly labeled when offered, offered for resale. Uniformity would be very desirable. Proper botanical plant names are more helpful to the nurseryman than to the customer. Botanical names serve the customer mainly as a protection that he is getting the correct plant. He will understand a light green, shiny leaf plant that grows four feet five inches high, but Pranus loraceus zabellinia may mean nothing to him. However, the nurseryman 
might guess a dozen different shrubs from the customer's description without mentioning Pranus laraceus zabilia. Therefore, proper naming is vital for customer protection, legal requirements, and communication between nursery and landscape professionals. Customers are interested in plants because of color, sun or shade tolerance, fragrance, size, or other characteristics. Salespeople in wholesale or retail nurseries, as well as in landscape management firms, should make the customer's interest their most important concern. Customers like to be able to recognize and name plants, but are rarely interested in precise scientific nomenclature. Use names the customer knows unless there's some local difference that could cause confusion. Use the botanical name as a reference point, never to merely show off your knowledge. The number of names to learn can seem overwhelming to the novice, but it is not necessary or possible to know them all. One should memorize the principal plants used in Louisiana and the Southeast to know how to look up plants in reference books for more information. The botanical name is the key to help locate all the information that's written about a particular plant. Knowing botanical names will set you apart as a professional horticulturist. Some genus and species names are derived from countries of origin, names of plant explorers, and descriptive Latin terms. Examples of Latinized geographical names are Hoponica, Carolinium, Washingtonia, and Mexicana. Examples of Latinized explorers' names are Douglasi, Darwini, Mencisi, and Nutali. Latin descriptive terms such as Gigantia, Pygmae, Nana, Rubra, Nigra, and host of other names are also common species names. See table one in your book for more details. Botanical names can tell much about certain characteristics of the plants. The meaning of some of those Latin words is the following list. Terms marked with an asterisk are those that are used most. This uh, table one is found in your book on page three. And it says terms incorporated into botanical names which describe a definite characteristic. I'm going on to page four. Horticultural classifications. Although plants are classified scientifically by their morph morphical characteristics based primarily by their flower structure, horticulturists find that grouping plants by use and group habit is also important. For example, unrelated plants such as Acuba, Fastisia, and Mahonia may be grouped together horticulturally as plants that prefer part shade to shade, even though botanically they are unrelated. So these plants are not related. Horticulturists might group all three of these together according to their growth requirements. Botanists would not group them together since their classification is based on structural, morphological, and physiological characteristics. Horticultural classifications are important to nurserymen since production, maintenance, marketing, and use are often similar for plants grouped by growth habit and cultural requirements. Table two on page five of the book shows the typical horticultural groupings. Moving on to chapter two, plant growth and development, structure and function. The structure and function of the various plant parts determine how they grow. The major plant parts include roots, stems, leaves, and reproductive parts. There's a great variation in appearance of these plant parts found throughout the plant kingdom. However, their basic functions generally remain the same. Figure one shows the basic parts of a plant. 